always impressive, always amazed with the viewers and these recipes. And that, the last one there with the cauliflower. Seriously, I was blown away by that one, and, and, and I'm excited. So now I'm going to throw another one at you that you were a major part of, because, again, we'd like to get out in the community and go explore among viewers and among fans of KCTS 9 Cooks. This time, you got to explore something fun involving Brussels sprouts. Yes. And that's another one that a most of us... A lot of people us, wouldn't say fun and Brussels sprouts in the same right. sentence. Right. And they just throw it on a plate and steam it. And it's like a throwaway idea as a side dish. But you found something very creative and fun, my friend. Yeah, it was. You know, the KCTS crew came out to sizzle work. And Michael Netkin from Herba Voracious came with Brussels sprouts. And we made two dishes with Brussels sprouts. I have to tell you, I am not a Brussels sprout fan, but now I'm a convert. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to want to get these recipes, especially if you don't like Brussels sprouts because they're going to change your mind. <laughs> Here we go. Have a look. Hi, we're here at Sizzle Works Cooking School, my place. And I'm here today with Michael Natkin, author of Herba Voracious Cookbook and Herba Voracious Blog. Welcome. Isn't Thank this you. great? I'm so glad to be here. Well, thank you for coming. We saw you come in with a whole bunch of Brussels sprouts. I've got a pile of Brussels sprouts a for big you today. Pile. Yeah, we're going to make some good stuff. Okay, well, you're going to have to convince me because I am not a fan of Brussels sprouts. Well, you know, I think as long as you don't overcook them and let them get mushy, they're going to be delicious. I'm pretty sure we can surprise you. Okay, cool. Where are we going to start? Well, the first thing we're going to do is take three tablespoons of butter and get them melting in my trusty cast iron skillet here. Oh, that sounds a little hot. So that gonna... looks like a well-loved cast iron you skillet. You know, it really is. In fact, one of the most popular blog posts I ever wrote was just about that skillet itself. Yes. Because, you know, I, I live in that thing. I, I keep it on my stove, and it seems like just about every dinner I ever make, you know, something happens in that skillet. <laughs> you know, I, just, I know how it's going to react. I can tell when it's hot. I can tell when yeah. something's going to fry. It's my friend. So it's like a member of the family. It really is. So we're going to dice an onion. And you see how I keep my fingers curled in? That's really yes. important. That is the way that you're going to avoid cutting yourself as you chop it. We call that the claw. The claw, exactly. Yes. So there's a nicely diced onion. So we put that right on in with the butter. And if I could put you to work, okay. I would love that peeled and cored and diced. And what size dice do you want? Oh, a quarter inch would work just great. All righty. So we're making a Brussels sprout and apple hash. We get the butter and the apple going, and then I'll show you how we do the Brussels sprouts. Of course, when you buy them, they look like this. Unless you so, so tell us how you pick these out. Well, the thing you want to look for, of course, no real horrible brown spots, and you want to kind of be evenly sized. This one's a little bit large, but what we'll do is we'll just sort of pluck off any kind of real coarse outer leaves, like that, and we'll chop off the bottom. Now, when you buy these, do they come loose, or are they on a big stalk? You can I see buy them, them both on the ways. stalk. Yeah, you do see them both ways, and on the stalk is nice, but uh, it really doesn't add any benefit, so it's perfectly fine to just buy them you know, like this and takes up a little less room in your fridge. Okay. Either way is fine. So then we're going to just sort of thinly shred them. Wow, we've got uh, dueling chef's knives here. Here we are. We work well together. Woo this is good. Okay, so that you see how we shred them, and just sort of quarter-inch slices will be fine. That's for the hash. How's your apple looking? My apple is ready? great okay. and done. Why don't you bring that right on into the skillet for me? Okay. Get the last bit of it here. Yep, those board scrapers are so handy, aren't they? Yes, indeed. One of my favorite things. So, again, we'll just give that a little stir. And we're just going to give the apples a little head start. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to give that. The uh, yes, this is a nice springy spatula. Didn't expect that. So, and again, always seasoning as we go. So we're going to give the apples just a brief head start on the Brussels sprouts. Do you want those to brown? Uh, we want them to start browning a little bit, but they're going to have plenty of more time in there with the Brussels sprouts, so there's, there's uh, no hurry to get them completely browned yet. So I think that's looking great. You've got a fair amount of sweetness going on in there, which would be really nice. And we're going to add more, too. We've got honey coming in a few minutes. Oh, wow. So, okay, yeah. good. This is definitely one of those you know, classic sort of autumnal things where you've got the, the sweet and the savory together, which I think everybody likes. So there's our Brussels sprouts. All nicely shredded. Thank you. So nice to have a sous chef here. Just kind of stir those through. Put that in there. And a little more salt. And then we can get our herbs in. Okay, so I see we've got some fresh sage here. Fresh sage and fresh rosemary. And I got them both from my garden this very ah, morning, so we see? know they're good. You want to if, if I'd known, I would have said, oh, don't bother. We have all this right uh, outside. We have, we have outside our own herb garden go. here. All right. Demonstrating a nice chiffonade for us. Look at that. Lovely. 
And with sage, of course, you really do want to cut it up like that because it's a little bit too chewy by itself. You know, if you yes. want to serve a whole leaf of sage it. Sage and oh, that's it's like this whole aromatherapy going oh, on right yeah, now. Oh yeah, we're getting some nice smells going here. And then again, picking the rosemary. You see how she just pulls right. And you down want a knife through this, like right? That. Yes, please. Okay. Again, we don't want any woody bits in there, so mm. we want to go ahead and break that up kind it, of fine. This smells like autumn. I think we can turn up the heat a little bit now. You can see that the uh, we got plenty in the pan. And our goal with this is we really do want to get these Brussels sprouts to brown a little bit, a little bit of caramelization, because that's so much of the delicious flavor. All right, so we'll get the rosemary in there. There you go. And then we got a couple more delicious things. We've got a uh, apple cider vinegar. You can also do this with champagne vinegar. Works really well. And a little bit of honey. Find your spoon there. Any specific kind of honey? You know, I would just use something kind of light for this, a clover honey or a wildflower or something like that. I, would, I don't think you want a real strong taste like a, a buckwheat honey necessarily right. for this dish. Let's see how that's looking. And the honey really almost is going to go in there and glaze and also caramelize a little bit as well. So that's going to be even more flavor. So now, basically, we just need to be a little bit patient. This is going to okay. probably take between five and ten minutes, so we're really getting everything to brown up nicely. Well, it's looking great. All those lovely green and yellow things going on in there, and it, it smells fantastic. Feels like fantastic. fall, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So these are looking just about ready. You're starting to at least see some nice brown bits happening there. We crank the heat up to really get them to crisp yeah, up and they brown. Yeah, they're getting some nice brown yeah, bits on there. Absolutely. That's the flavor part. Yeah. Now, since this is fall, we'd like to add a few more fall flavors. I brought some uh, dried cherries, okay. which are great in there. We'll just use a few, just so you get that every once in a while, that little bite of sour fruit. And then I've also brought uh, some beautiful... Um, Hazelnuts. These are home hazelnuts. Yeah. yeah, those are oh. from up near Bellingham, That's Linden right. area. Right. Yeah, we grow some of the best hazelnuts in the country up we here do. in Washington. We do. We are so lucky Aren't with we? all the wonderful things we grow I here. I know, and my wife has a nut allergy, so I don't often get to cook with nuts at all home, right. so I'm excited to uh, get to <laughs> use them here at Sizzleworks today. So I think this is done. We are ready to serve it up. Fantastic. All right, how's it look? Good? Looks good. All right. You want to take it with a taste? Yes, I'm excited about this. All right. Get a bite with the hazelnuts. I think that's going to okay, be the Okay, I want to get everything part. all on one spoon here. Mm. How do we do? These are very good. Thank I you. do like this. All right. See you. Another Brussels sprout convert. Me. So we have more Brussels sprouts. I see. What else are we going to do? We do. We're going to do a Brussels sprout gratin. Mm. So, Carol, the first thing we're going to do for the gratin is make the cream sauce. Okay. So we'll I get, like cream. Oh, me too. So we're going to get some uh, butter in a pan here, get that melting. And then I'm going to slice the onion. Can I put you to work dice, uh, mincing that garlic for me? You bet. All right. We're going to have here we go, doing chef. Doing, doing chef knives again, exactly. And the, uh, the way we're doing the sauce for this particular gratin, some people do it with a bechamel, you know, which is the mm -hmm. uh, milk or cream uh, with a flour. Mm -hmm. thicken it. We're just going to take cream and actually just reduce it down. We're going to simmer it for about simmer it for about 10 or 15 minutes. It's going to be absolutely awesome. It is. It's going to be really rich and delicious without any of that sort of um, floury texture that you might mm -hmm. get in a bechamel. Well, and sometimes I find that when you do a bechamel and then you put it in the oven, it tends to curdle. You know, that can absolutely happen. Yeah, the texture is hard to control. And the way I do this gratin, uh, I really like to create the sauce and then cook the sprouts and make the uh, topping all separately. You know, we're just really going to have it in the oven just long enough to kind of come together. But that gives you a lot more control over the texture of each of the different components. You can just go right on in there with the garlic. There we go. Looks good. And as soon as we get the, uh, bit. the onions to melt down a little bit, we will add the cream. Okay. Always want to have a little bit of salt at this Soften stage, too, because that's going to help get the uh, moisture out. Exactly. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is get the sprouts into the microwave. And okay. So that's uh, we, we're going to pre-cook them a little bit, and that way we're not relying on the oven to cook the sprouts. We're just going to heat them back up. So I see that these are all trimmed up. Let's show our viewers how you do that. You bet. These are all trimmed and ready to go, exactly. And all you have to do when you buy a fresh sprout like this, you just take the bottom off. And then usually a couple leaves will come loose, and those ones are often the least desirable, so you just get rid of those. And then uh, same on this one. And you also might look for, if you see one or two sprouts that are enormous, that one's awfully big. 
we'll just chop that guy in half so that it cooks a little more evenly. This guy looks kind of big. Too. Should we cut him too? All right, yeah. let's get him. Oops. So then we're going to microwave it uh, for about five minutes. Always want to poke a couple holes in the top. And then we'll just check after a few minutes and see if they're starting to get tender. We don't okay. want to overcook them. Here we go. All Back right, in away. they go. Sometimes the microwave is your friend. So let's take a look at our onions here. I think those are looking fine. We're ready to add the cream. So we got just nice heavy cream, same thing as whipping whipped cream that you'll find in the dairy case. And we're gonna just look to get that to a simmer or a little bit more. Cream is really nice. It doesn't tend to break when you heat it the way other dairy no, products won't, do, which, which is, is great. great. Yeah. One of the reasons I like it a lot. It's very friendly, isn't it? Okay, so that's just gonna cook away. And then we're gonna the topping for our um, Gratin is going to be breadcrumbs, and I brought two choices. Okay. So we've got homemade breadcrumbs. Does this need to go in there? The oregano is, we're going to get that in the cream okay. there. Yeah, we, right. can, we can do that in a minute, absolutely. So uh, these are homemade breadcrumbs. All I did was Beautiful. I just took some leftover bread that was a little bit stale, toasted it for a minute, put it in my blender, and then toasted them in a skillet. Very nice. Easy to do. really you nutty know. flavor. Yes, it has a great flavor. And you see how brown they are. That's where yes. you really get the flavor. Yeah. We can also use panko, uh, which is a popular you know, Japanese breadcrumb. Certainly. Everybody loves it. It's very uh, really crisp. crispy. Yeah, really yeah, yeah. Crisp and crunchy. And if we're going to use that, we're just going to toast that in a skillet as well. So I've got a uh, dry skillet here, no fat whatsoever. And we'll just uh, give it a little toss. We'll keep an eye on it. We'll get that brown. Okay. Okay, so the cream is bubbling away that's there. That's looking good. So now we wait until we have cooked Brussels sprouts and thickened okay. cream, and we'll put it all together. I think our cream sauce is just about done. How are our Brussels sprouts? I think that they are. Oh, they are ready. Are we good or what? Amazing timing. <laughs> Incredible. All right, let's see if they are done. So maybe just give them a little poke with a knife and see if they uh, seem tender to you. So I'm going to check them through. Oh, yep, that, that feels just pretty right. good. Okay. So let's so just If you want to see. go ahead and move those into the casserole. I can do that. Fantastic. And let's check on our cream sauce. So this should be starting to get thick now. And the best way to check that is with a spoon. You know, you just take a little, make a little line. And if that line holds, we're good. That means it's thickened enough. Thickened thick enough. enough. Yeah. So we're going to season that up. We're going to use some freshly ground black pepper. And I always think it's best with uh, pepper to wait and add it at the end so that you're getting the really the freshest possible flavors mm -hmm. from it. Then we've got nutmeg, and again, this is something I think a lot of home cooks don't do, is take the time to grate nutmeg fresh. fresh. Oh, there's nothing like Isn't it. Isn't it incredible? I mean, the, the dried stuff is just not even a shadow of no. uh, freshly grated. So we use plenty of that. And then we've got some oregano from my garden here. Just pick a few leaves of that in there. Beautiful. And then let's just stir it up and give that a little taste, make sure it's where we want it. Okay. Ooh, that looks good all look by good. itself. Does not look tasty. You might just have to have that for soup instead. So let's see. There we, we go. Not my onion soup. Okay, that's great, except it needs a little bit more salt. There we go. And then we'll just pour this right on over the Brussels sprouts. Here we are. See Thank how pretty you. and Look green these are? Yeah. They're beautiful. Yep, yep, yep. And see how we've got the sprouts in sort of a single layer there? Mm -hmm. I think that's best. There we go. Get a few more of the onions in. So you don't want to completely cover this? No. Just, you know, enough that we've got a delicious cream sauce in there. Okay, and then we've got our homemade breadcrumbs. Or we could use the panko, either one. Get a nice even layer on there. Yum. Does that look good? And then the nice thing is, since everything's already cooked, all this needs to do is just go in the oven just long enough to just heat to back heat through, and we're ready to and serve it. And pretty much everything's hot anyway. So, exactly. and what about this cheese? Oh, Does this need to go on. Thank you. It's a good thing to work with professionals. Absolutely, we don't. Oh, want I always have my students there because they keep me in. Uh, keep me. Yes, they keep, keep me in line. Things. Yep, that's right. So we got just some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, of course. Mm. Parmigiano Reggiano doesn't get any better than the that. good stuff. Exactly. And we're ready to go in the oven. Okay, to the oven. So this will just bake for about 10 minutes, and when it comes out, it should be bubbly and delicious. So here we oh, are. Right. Wow. wow. Look at that. So That is awesome. Bubbling around the edges. That's how we know it's done, ready to serve. A little bit of brown on top. Mm. If only you could smell this. There's, you can smell the nutmeg, that little bit of garlic, the onions, the cheese. Oh, I cannot wait to taste this. All right. So Michael Natkin from Herba Voracious, the blog and the cookbook, thank you very much for the Brussels sprouts gratin. 
and the Brussels sprout and apple hash. Come back and see us again. This Carol, is really awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. You bet. Take care. Thank you.